Uh, but that doesn't work. So I'm dying. Uh, wh what is Gooding at? What are the numbers on Gooding? Are these accurate? All right. I think these are the accurate numbers. Let's go over these real quick. Let's do a Sturgis. Guys, Gooding, uh, the polymath, the polymath, sold 7,000 books and made $211,000. By far the worst campaign uh, in the history of uh, Eric July's Ripperverse. Uh, I don't know how he's going to keep the lights on. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Uh, especially, we talked about this before, but it bears repeating. Uh, Horseman was supposed to be out already. He was supposed to have Gooding, Horseman, and Yara out by June 10th. Right? <clears throat> And if he was counting on that money, if payroll and everything was counting on that money, he's behind. He's behind at least one campaign, right? And depending on what he was expecting these campaigns to do, he was expecting Gooding to do a million dollars or even a half a million. Ah, he's behind. Now, we also have to talk about uh, the dirty T word, taxes. That's right, taxes. Guys, now, I don't know if you know this, but... Uh, Two hundred eleven thousand is not what he puts in Eric July's pocket. That's not his take-home money. Okay. A, uh, you got to take out how much he paid Mike Barron and the rest of the team uh, for the book. You got to take out how much it costs to print and ship the books. Right. All that factors in, and then taxes yep. uh, on top of that. Uh, so if we're generous, let's say. Um, Let's be conservative. Two hundred eleven thousand. Let's say, uh, say it takes eleven thousand, right, just to make the book. Mike Barron, uh, Will Conrad, all the all the people on the team. So that leaves him with two hundred thousand. Uh, we got taxes. Taxes would have came off of the two eleven. What are taxes usually, Chris? You know the well. The thing is about the taxes. I don't know if he's doing this quarterly or whatever because that would be coming off of Yaira. But at the end of the day, you're taxed on profits, and the way that he is going about things, the bottom line is bleeding. I think it's safe to say we've all anybody who is mathematically literate or business literate in any way can see what he's you know said versus what he's doing and his taxes are going to become more and more less impactful let's just say because again it, you're taxed on profits you're not ta it's not like you and I getting taxed on you know income right yeah. based on our tax bracket or whatever because he goes to his accountant at the end of the quarter the end of the year however he chooses to do his taxes and says, this is what's come in, this is what's gone out, this is what's left over. Okay, Eric, this is what you're getting taxed on. Um, but yeah, but as far as taxes go, his biggest tax burden that's ongoing are things that are relatively fixed. He's got a shit ton of employees because he doesn't do contractors for that many for whatever reason, you know, based on what he said. And when you're doing FICA tax, payroll tax, all this other shit that are fixed taxes, he he's just getting beat up but yeah i mean the income tax is is going to become less of an issue as the bottom line starts to fade uh, so we'll say 200,000 um i wish george was here he would give us a good number what it costs to print it out but let's say 20,000 to print so that's only 180,000 now we're down to right is that going to be enough to sustain his business? One hundred eighty thousand. Uh, Yaira launched, so we got Yaira and Gooding. Is Yaira going to be, uh, you know, the what was it one point three million? Uh, whatever that ends up after, you know, the cost of producing all the items and everything and shipping and is that going to carry him for the rest of the year? Because I see a horseman doing probably the same amount of numbers here, right? Uh, so this is Eric's cope on the uh, getting. It says, uh, thanks to everybody for making our first ever collection a success. 
first off, why is it a collection? I don't understand this this idea of a collection. It's just one book. How's that? A, how's that a collection? It's not like it's like a, you know Gooding's issue one through five, the Gooding collection, right? It's just the first issue of Gooding. It's two different covers. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand the Eric isms. Uh, well, I think also was this Gooding initially supposed to kind of like <laughs> Horse Man? It was pitched as a one-off. So, so is that why he's calling it a collection because it's intended to just be a one-off book? Um, I don't remember if he pitched it as a one-off or if he um just said that it was something coming out. I know Horseman that was eventually said it was oh this is just a one-off, guys. Don't worry. But I think Gooding is supposed to be an ongoing comic like Isom and, and Yaira. But I mean until I read it, I wouldn't even know. Like, depending on how it ends, I guess we could determine whether or not it was slated for an ongoing series or if it was just a one off self contained story, right? Yeah. He says, already uh, making, it says, already 205,000 in sales and 7,000 books sold for gooding the Polymath. Only three items, no signed copies, and our lowest priced book to date. So there's the Coke guys. Uh, if he had signed copies, uh, definitely everyone would have bought signed copies. It says to put this in perspective, even if you added just half the amount of the CGC sold during Yaris campaign to this collection, it'd be nearing 500k sales and 9,000 plus books sold. Uh, I think this is a, a again Coke. Do you think? Does anyone here on the panel think that um, they would have sold a? Significant amount of CGC graded Gooding comics. No, no way. Well, I wrote a, I, I did a write up on this when I saw this, and my thoughts on this were okay. So you are telling your audience right here that you're leaving off purposely your highest margin item, okay? Because these CGC books are significantly more than just the regular book. So you're telling them, I'm going to purposely leave off my highest margin book. I'm only just going to sell a poster in a t-shirt. And he's also telling me, who's somebody who's not a retard, who can say, okay, you've got a mailing list, Eric. You've run four campaigns. Let's say Yaira and Alpha Core were the closest in the neighborhood of sales. And let's just leave ISOM completely separate. I guarantee if he opened up the sales and the spreadsheets and said, who bought these signed books? Who bought these CGC graded books? He would find a tremendous overlap between the Alpha Core buyers and the Yaira buyers. Now, why in the f is he not mining that data to approach these people separately in another email to say, hey, look, you've bought your customers that we've identified who bought these books in the past, by the way, thanks for that. But he knows these are his lot, his rider dies, his diehard fan base who are going to buy whatever the fuck puts out there. He didn't need to guess on this. There's no, there needs to, there's no hyperbole that's needed just to put this in perspective. If we just did half, he could have known within a very small margin of error, how many people would have bought CGC books had he released them. And for him to not know that tells me that no one in that warehouse knows what the f they're doing. And to right. leave the amount of money on the table, because I posted this on day 17, and that's yesterday when he posted this, Yaira had made 1.2 something million dollars. Alpha Core was at 1.03 million. So he's also telling everybody, I am willing to leave 800,000 to a million dollars on the table by not doing a campaign and doing this, in what world does that make sense? And his excuse was, I think in this, is it prioritizes efficiency. I thought he had rock stars in his warehouse. How is this prioritizing efficiency? Just put out an arbitrary timeline and all your apologists, all your allies will say, hey, this is when he said he was going to deliver and this is when he delivered. How hard is that? So when I read this statement, I, I, I couldn't help myself. I, I'm a part-time detractor, if that even now, but 
I looked at this and I just I just scratched my head because it made no sense whatsoever. Uh, I agree. Well, let's, let's uh, finish this up and see what he says here because he does says this solidifies the new format that prioritizes efficiency. Um, how? I don't understand. Uh, like Chris was kind of hinting at here, how does this prioritize efficiency? What is more efficient about this format versus anything else? Uh, the campaign format, you ordered a book, you eventually got a book, right? This format, you order a book, you eventually get a book. It's not like you order a book and then it go, it's shipping out that next week. Fulfillment doesn't start until the 29th of this month. Uh, Gooding went on sale last month, so you still had to wait a month, right? Almost two months uh, for Gooding to start shipping. So how is this any more efficient than any of his other campaigns? Uh, none of this makes sense. Uh, the ISO 1 campaign was probably the most efficient just because he had all the books pre-bought, right? Um, uh, with more book releases and quicker delivery, this was for sure the right move. Again, the books haven't even been delivered yet. How does he know it's quicker delivery? Uh, what if... God forbid something happens between now and the 29th, right? A warehouse fire, a uh, earthquake. Uh, the Texas government decides to seize his warehouse for uh, drug distribution. I don't know. Who knows what could happen is what I'm saying. So how is he even saying? Maybe he's got illegals working in there. And they're going to raid, you know. Uh, Eric July is starting to put the cart before the horse. Uh, it's not more efficient. Uh, this would be something to at least wait until after delivery of the books. Uh, you agree or disagree, Wizard? He says this is a more efficient format, but the books haven't even been delivered yet, and he's already saying that this is a, has a quicker delivery. Yeah, like, what is he doing that's really different? Like Nothing. They're cheaper. Like, unless the paper is lighter and... Uh, there's no ad, so he can use media mail, right? Like uh, EVS was talking about that. Like, yeah, well, he know. cut out the I, ads after the first one, so he could use media mail. Uh, yeah, since. so the, I don't know. Business, I suppose. Business. Uh, I know it's less pages, uh, so there's that. Also, he says it's the cheapest one yet, but here's the problem. Uh, the... Um, Alternate covers are still thirty-five dollars. So you still it's thirty-five dollars for a seventy-two page book if you get any if you get the better looking cover, right? Uh, the limited edition cover. If you get the regular cover, the mass produced one, that's eighteen dollars. Uh, so yeah, it is cheaper, uh, but it is less book, right? It's not like you're still getting the hundred uh, pages of ISOM. You're getting seventy-two pages. He's reduced the pages and reduced the price. So I don't know if it's cheaper. I mean, you could probably do the math on the uh, the cost per page, right? It might come to be a little bit cheaper, but I don't think it's significantly uh, cheaper. Uh, then he's going to move on. It says, fulfillment for getting starts the 29th. Then we move to the Horseman Collection. Oh, man. Uh, so what do, you, what do you guys think? Is this a success? Can we say that Eric July has won? He succeeded in this campaign, or do you think this is a uh, failure, or did he just break even? Well, who cares? The definition of winning is delivering the books on time. So if this doesn't work out for him, he can always open up the shop. <laughs> Hot Dog says, I'm actually excited to see that Horseman merch. Well, he's probably not going to have any merch, merch other than the uh, shirt. And maybe a poster like he did with um, Gooding. Because Gooding had just, what, the shirt, poster, and then the comics. The other thing, again, I don't know how Eric July is uh, doing his business, right? I can only guess. Uh, but we don't know if, because there's a first appearance bundle, right, that has, like, the isoms uh, and Gooding. Uh, so we don't know if he's counting those comics in comics sold, right? Uh, he's got the one that has Yaira, things like Yaira and um, 
Alpha Core, like the pick your cover mm-hmm. bundle. So again, is he counting each individual? So if I buy the uh, Ripperverse first appearance bundle, right? It's got a Gooding and it's got a Isom. Does that count two comics or does it count one comic, right? Uh, does all that money go into the total or does just some of that money go into the total, right? All right. So this guy here, uh, Charles C., he says, eventually he will need to reduce the page counts and have the more popular titles released on a month and a monthly basis and get the most popular titles in comic shops if he wants to put his dot, dot, dot. Right? So Eric replies, you bring up a solid point. The only thing I'd push back on is the bit about the comic shops. Though we do sell to comic shops, we have a retail portal. Uh, the data suggests it's no longer a measure of success nor is it a re- reliable way to remain profitable. This is because the, quote, newsstand element has been largely digitized and most discovery happens on the internet. So this guy agrees that uh, he should, you know, reduce the page counts, more frequent uh, titles, right? Uh, solid plan, Eric, solid plan. But also, uh, JDA says, you'll also, uh, you'll also not have to reduce the page count. Having dedicated teams that do a solid story once or twice a year just means you need six to 12 teams. What you've got is a nice European-style model rather than doing floppies, which don't make money even for Image Comics or the like. Eric says, I'm totally with you on this. I think the larger page count is the way to go. To your point, having several different teams working on their individual project projects ensure both quality and productivity. Eric, um, didn't you just say that smaller page counts Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. It just contradicts uh, themselves. Yeah. Well, someone else said something different, and he he has now changed his belief in that. He has heard new evidence. New evidence has come forward. He has changed his belief. I, I don't know if new evidence has come forward, or Eric just wants to please everybody, or maybe he's going to do both. Uh, he is insane enough. Uh, strange signal for $2. Would you say that Ripperverse has no hope? Uh, I would. The way it's running, it, it, it's really hard to say this, right? It. I don't want to seem like I'm riding the fence or, or whatever, right? Um, but at any moment, like at a moment's notice, Eric can change his business. He can change uh, the way he's doing things, and you know, try to pull up on the lever. I don't think the plane is so far gone that he can't pull up and uh, write the write the course, right? But the way it's going right now, I'd say no hope, no hope. If he continues down the path he's taking, uh, he's just going to bankrupt himself, uh, in my belief. Uh, What what do you think, Uh, Wiz? Uh, Pull up uh, just means talking it out and having confrontations. So, I mean, I think he he can't pull up. He'd just go straight down. He's unable to pull up. But, no, uh, I, I would say that the hype has died after each book, right? Like. There's no, Yaira should have been right after Isom one should have come out faster. I think he took that year, you know, wasted time between Isom one and two. The plot of Isom two sucked. It's just, yeah, there's, there's no way we're seeing an Isom five, right? There, that, no, that's not happening. You know, we're not seeing Alpha Core three. You know, it, it, it's not gonna happen. You think that's it? I think I think the end comes unless he because we've also said before that he'll find a way to keep the Ripperverse alive by massively cutting back and putting out like digital Dokuman cards, right? That are giving that continue the story, and then maybe he does a comic like once a year, right? If he's like if he starts bleeding, losing money, can't afford nothing, he'll have like a skeleton crew of an artist and a printer and all that stuff, right? He'll, he'd find a way to keep going. But I don't think I he's not he's not going to go back up to Isom one numbers. That ain't happening. No, nah, um, he's not going to get those numbers for a long like ever. It's a one deal kind of thing. So. Well, there you go. 